Hey YouTube, Mochismo Eugene. This is another video from Exit Strategy. And uh, today I want to talk to you guys about Obsessed, the movie with Beyonce, Israel Abba, if I'm saying his name right. Uh, he's one of uh, a favorite actor of mine and has been for a while. Everything he's pretty much played in, I've almost watched. I don't watch TV generally anymore. I know this movie is pretty old and um, when it first came out I had already experienced some things very similar to what I believe this plot was about uh, you know in past we can see pretty much things from afar almost before they happen uh, I told you we can see through walls that's a gift from God it's, it supersedes intuition it's an intuition on steroids uh, so anyway, I'm going to address this movie in uh, stark detail as it pertains to things we deal with in the world today uh, that are not just a movie. They're, they're real life. And uh, also things that I have experienced firsthand in this parallel of how this movie goes, even before the movie. Now, Israel Alba, he played in a movie called... Uh, Daddy's Little Girl, and if you've never seen that movie, um, it is an interesting movie. I don't like to recommend movies or any type of drama to anyone, but in this world we live in, we see things, we are the type of human being. Sometimes entertainment uh, allows us to put our uh, worries behind us, or just, as we would say, let our hair down, and kind of just be human but I'm here to tell you these are not the things we need to relish and uh, rely on to let our hair down or to uh, be human because Hollywood has long ago found out what makes us tick what makes us salivate and most of which is when we can see someone else struggling or suffering it elevates our sense of existence. Who else does this? Who else does this take pleasure out of watching other people's pain? A narcissist. So what am I saying? Narcissists since the beginning of time have tried to persuade God-fearing chosen ones and empaths to follow in their stead. They are training us on how to behave badly. There's no other way to say it. There's no other way to put it. Some would say, oh, you know, machismo, you really are thinking too deep into this. That's as deep as it gets. Take us in pals and chosen ones and survivors of narcissistic abuse. You won't get any arguments from us here, man. We, none of us, none of us will, who are awakened will argue the point I just made. The things that we've lived or the things that we've seen in movies, both present, past, and movies that we may see in the future, what we've lived has superseded that because the, the movies that we've seen in the past, we have in some way, shape, or form lived them, experienced them, or witness them in somebody else's life. The horror movies that have no rhyme or reason where from the beginning to the end there is just uh, a lot of malice, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of gory killing, stabbing, decapitating, uh, intestines coming out. You know, we as a human we, we as a human existence, as w whether we want to admit it or not, we relish, the subconscious relish. It relishes this type of stuff because that is the evil, sinful nature of mankind. And again, Mochismo, you know, uh, I ain't going around here killing people. It's just entertainment. That is what has gotten us in a lot of trouble. Do you know what you take in your your mental into your mental with your eyes and then thereby taken into your to your mind 
it has a tendency to play itself out in some way, shape, or form in your life. Take, for example, we see certain things uh, where bl uh, police brutality, when we see this happens in real life, we may chime in from a distance, get off of him, stop doing that. But the vast majority of us won't take a pro proactive approach and uh, intervene other than being verbally dis uh, distracting. And a lot of us will have our uh, camera out and video on it just to upload it to YouTube to say we're the first one that uh, did that or we were there. We actually witnessed this. We're no more than local celebrities trying to gain a little bit of fame. This is an atrocious world we're living in. I live my life to the fullest. I'm a pretty happy and content person, but I don't denounce or uh, uh, deny. I don't deny that these things uh, around us are dark and disturbing. And we are normalizing it at rapid rates. And when a funeral comes about or there's a disaster or there's a demise of someone, people don't mourn healthy like they used to. We don't mourn long. We mourn for a quick second and we're back to business. We put more stock in holidays and the, 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 the leading up into holidays than we do a person's funeral. Very disturbing. I've, I've since had to look at myself over the last few years and you know, I'm constantly trying to stay aware of what, what am I built like? Do, do I actually like uh, where I'm at as a human being? Do I sign on to this type of stuff? But we're going to go back into this movie with Beyonce. I never aspired to look at this movie. It never appealed to me. Uh, the preview with her, it has a, had a level of sensationalism being that Beyonce's, Beyonce is very attractive and when she acts very aggressive and takes charge as a woman defending her husband from an obsessed, psychotic, disturbed, Caucasian woman, this plays out in many ways in America and throughout the world. It plays out in, in a lot of different fashions. You know, people are rooting for Beyonce, and in a sadistic way, a lot of people are rooting for uh, the obsessed, psychotic girl. Whether they admit it or not, they are rooting for her to take the man away from the woman. And in this case, it's Beyonce. It could be any woman. Some people actually root for the disturbed to win. You know, I remember Superman and the Legion, uh, uh, is it the Legion of Doom or uh, Superhero? Yeah, Superman, uh, it was way back in the 70s. Kind of forget what they were called, but you had, uh, you had a lot of different superheroes. I could name them when I was younger, but I've forgotten them. And good and evil. We all like to see evil. Uh, good prevails over evil. I almost said evil prevails over good. But good prevails over evil. A, a lot of us who are healthy, we don't want to see evil uh, prevail. But in a, in a very twisted way, back to the humanism in us, we love a good dog fight just to, just to see the competitiveness, to see we're going to win. This is why we like sporting events. Does this make us all bad? No. But what it does doing us, it makes us very adjusted to this when it happens on an extreme level. And in this movie, obviously the woman dies, or I don't know if she dies. I would, I, I didn't even really see the end end of the movie. I think there's been movies, and this is a parallel with these movies. Uh, good seemingly prevails over evil, but in many cases, just like with Jason, uh, all of these gory movies, the person, even with Saw, you always think that person is, is uh, dead in the end, and all of a sudden, you don't see them anymore, they disappear, the body, they go to 
to get the body and the body wasn't there and this is to this is to put to extend this drama so you have to get uh, in line to wait till the next one come out to see if they're gonna kill him in the next movie and so with this obsessed woman I don't know if she her body was found if she disappeared I didn't even take a look at the end I mean I just I got up and I just I know what the end is the end is there is no end it's from one extreme to another and it's funny how the police never ever uh, took the action in the way they should have you know you hear the you hear the man here he's getting accused by this psycho and she's convincing and this is exactly how a narcissist is. They're very, if you take a very psychotic, all of them are psychotic, the narcissists. But some of them are so <clears throat> deeply psychotic. And you will see a borderline personality, not a uh, yeah, borderline personality disorder person on this spectrum of this psychosis. They tend to obsess. How do I know? Uh, I've been involved with a woman or two in this respect. I've mentioned about a German girl that I dated once upon a time. Uh, she is now today walking around with a tattoo of my name in letters, probably yay big, we'd say about two inches in height and one inch in width, or we'd say one, one and a half. Pretty big letters. She has my first name tattooed on her private area. And this is after I had determined her to stay away from me, not to come around me again. She showed up and she pleaded her last ditch attempt. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to always love you. I'm going to go get your name on me. And I'm going to tell you the. Uh, the whole of the story, the entire whole of the story. And this is the short version. When she told me that she was planning to do this, she wanted me to go with her, to which I did. And I'm going to tell you, in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, I just can't seem to get rid of this girl. I'm just going to play along with this, go to the tattoo shop. We get there. We're looking in this book. She said, I want you to decide. So in, in essence, I'm saying, okay, I'm going to do exactly what she's going to put her name on me. I'm going to let her do it. I've never regretted it. And I went as far as, to, and I, I went as far as I helped to look. She wanted me to decide what kind of calligraphy, or what lettering she could get, she should get. And then she also, uh, when she went to get it, I, I told her, I said, I'm going to pay for it. I'll pay for it. And I paid for it. I paid for it. It was in some weird way, my way of going along to get along because it was just, it, you couldn't make this stuff up. I figured in my mind, if this individual was determining to do something like this, as extreme as this, I might as well pay for this. I sat in there, I paid for it, and I'm going to tell you what the tattoo guy told us. And this is admirable on his part. He said, you know, um, he said, I never suggest someone get someone's name on you. He said, because most people who get a tattoo of their either significant other or their partner's name on them, their relationship uh, usually ends within six months or less. And I told him, we already passed that. I ain't even wear her. And you would have thought she would have been like, wow, this guy is sincerely not wanting to be involved with me anymore. The light does not come on in these people's head, man. And that was before I even knew what narcissism, narcissism was and MPD and BPD, borderline personality disorder, and all the other insidious disorders. So I uh, I paid for it, and when he said that, I said, yeah, we're past that. I said, I ain't even, I ain't even with her. And he said, okay, you sure you want to do this? And she said, yeah. And I sat there and watched her get my name. With little to no emotion did I have. And to little to no emotion did she have as far as the pain. The threshold. Her pain threshold was, 
And that's kind of like the movie with Beyonce. This lady, Beyonce was pulverizing this woman. And not one time did she say, ouch, ooh. It is something a switch goes off and it goes dim or dark in these people's head. We had a police officer here some years ago. Uh, the day, the day uh, immediately following uh, court, uh, some hours later, he after he had lost uh, the custody of the children and um, uh, the house, and he was uh, ordered to pay alimony. He went over to uh, pay a visit to the wife shortly after court. And the story goes, she allowed him in the house. She opened the door. And some, some said she was on the phone talking to one of her girlfriends or something. And I guess she had finally uh, breathed a sigh of relief. And so, you know, as women will do, she just needs somebody to con console with. And uh, he, she allowed him in. On and on and on, I guess uh, a debate or an argument ensued. He might have said, it, in, you know, be me and a man, he might have said something along these lines like are you happy now and he was just a broken man and I'm not defending what he did but I'm just telling you uh, he had became psychotic shortly before this happened in the court because uh, he worked during, at the school and they took him on administrative leave because I think he brandished a gun inside of the school uh, with a student and he just was unhinged and they didn't take his firearm from him at this point and they had, did put him on leave from uh, the police force. Long story short, he went in, talked to her, and something ensued. And in some way, shape, or form, he uh, stabbed and killed his uh, wife in the home that day. And he went on to stab and slit his own throat uh, shortly thereafter. And the children came home from school to discover this and they but thereby and the father was still alive and they called 911 911 and the police came and he was able to tell them that he said I did this and he uh, he, he died from uh, from his injuries later on sometime later and that's a local story here uh, we had a story where a, a guy a kid Killed all his family members, three of them, and he rearranged the, the the heads of them at the dinner table, and almost took another kid's life that came over to check on uh, the kid's sister, because that same day she had said her brother was acting really, really super weird, and he was on medication, and she said uh, he and her little black friend, this is a white kid that did this, and uh, he killed his sister, mother, and father or stepfather, so three people. And uh, he's in uh, prison now, in the psych prison, as we speak. But uh, the thing with this is, the girl had told her little black friend early that day, she said, I don't feel comfortable in the house with him. And he acting crazy. And, she, and the little black kid said, no, he always acting like that. She said, no, no, he's just acting real different today. And that same day, he had, uh, he had uh, almost killed the family dog. And they took him in and, and to the hospital. Gave him a triage, drew blood from him, gave him a little semi-psych valu valuation and released him. And prior to him taking the lives of his family, he was seen just up the road from his house, naked in the dead of winter, throwing snowballs at someone's house. And they, they took the liberty to call the police. Uh, this is prior to them taking him to the hospital and, and giving him a psyche valve. And uh, this proceeded him uh, almost killing the dog. And so later on that night when they released him, he went home and this is what he did. So we've had a lot of local tragedies here that you normally would see in movies. And I'm a little bit all over the place because this, this comes full circle. And my whole premise for saying this in this, in this video is to let you guys know that some of the movies that we watch that are sensationalized, this is what I'm actually saying. Unsubscribe to any drama, any thrillers, horror, any gory movies and movies of, uh, that lack ethics. 
because you're not learning anything in seeing these movies. You're not learning the depth of how, how, how dark society is because guess what we do? We go and we come out of that movie theater and say, man, that was great the way they wrote that movie. She was crazy. Most of you haven't experienced firsthand this depth of horror, this depth of disturbance. And the narcissist that you probably was with was probably that disturbed. Fortunately for a lot of us, you just never got to see that depth of disturbance. And bless you for not seeing it because these people have probably did some atrocious things to people before you. God took favor in your life and just took you out of that. There's no, there's no, there's no reason for you from this day forth. If you have a television, if you have anything, uh, you know, a television or you're that movie goer type person, even the cartoons, they have the little subtle, they animate it and they humor us, but they have very disturbed connotations to them. Take the Lion King. That's the narcissist in a nutshell right there. Scar. He, hate his, he hated his brother and his nephew from the beginning of the movie to the end. He was just a miserable, miserable creature. He enlisted the hyenas. The father sacrificed his life to save the son. He poured, Scar poured, poured shame upon the little kid, convinced him, gaslit him, to the point where he ran off and deserted his homeland. But God sent somebody to this little kid to wake him up to the foolery. I use Lion King as an analogy on a lot of occasions because nothing's been truer of the narcissist than that Lion King movie. But how many of y'all saw that in the movie? Impasse, chosen ones, you're going to be able to look back at movies that you've looked, you've watched in times past, and it's going to churn your stomach. And you will begin to turn out, off and tune out these things. You, you will never, you won't, you will no longer have a desire to watch these movies. Whether you're a Christian or you're uh, not a Christian. If you are a healthy human being that's trying to progressively become more and more healthy in your life, these are movies that won't even appeal to you anymore. You can do without them because guess what? For the rest of your life, you have these movies playing out in front of you every day when you go out and about. There's nothing to be learned about these movies, from these movies. You want to learn something about horror and, and darkness and evil? Just pay attention to your world. Pay attention to your world. Stop getting caught up on the glitz and the glamour. Watch how people move. Watch how excited they get over some of the most frivolous, shallowest things in the world. And again, what you smoke, you're just taking, you know, the joy out of living. You're taking the joy out of life. On the contrary. I've never lived such a beautiful life than I am living right now. I am paced. I am poised to expect better out of my life, thereby being better to other people. No greater time in my life have I uh, appreciated where I'm at. See, when you are of a sound mind, you look crazy to everybody. That's how you know. A sound mind cares less about what people think. A sound mind cares less about uh, what people's opinions of you are. A sound mind is secure in self. That sound mind comes from the reverence and the fear of the Lord. Healthy fear of God. I tell my children all the time, I say, when you hear the word fear, it's not always a bad thing. Then you'll 
get the world talking about hate is such a strong word. The world hates. That's part of the reverse psychology. They will say that, but at the same time, they will hate the very things that they tell you you're not supposed to hate. Free will is yours. Free will is mine. So I have the free will to hate whatever I want to hate. God said you must love good and hate evil. So hate is, by God's own words, is justifiable in that respect. Once you get to the point where you want to love good, how do you know what's good? Got to measure that by God's definition of what's good. Not what the world tells you is, is good. They'll put what they want you to think is good out in front of you. They'll put their noble uh, mask out in front. But the underlining or the underbelly of that is they're disturbed, demonic, evil agenda you'll see this in every facet of life once you start paying attention what do you do once you see this once you what do you do when you observe these things you begin to look inward towards yourself and you begin to just denounce all the things that you've embraced from past up into this point you begin to look and search inside of you and say, these things no, no longer appeal to me because I see the stench that's associated with them. Then the beautiful part is you're going to start living a beautiful life because you'll see that look. It's not about doing all of that. I can do the fundamental things of life and that's enough because that's a lot on my plate just trying to do the fundamental things of life. Getting up, putting my best foot forward, having a healthy relationship with God, asking him to guide me and do the things in which he's instructed me to do. And from that point on, just let the chips fall where they may. Because beyond that, those are the only things that we are really responsible for. And we get that word out and we let people see that it's a beautiful life when you start looking at the world in the sense where you want to be a contributor. You want to be a contributor to this world. So that Beyonce movie was something that I'd lived many times before. At some point, I'm going to talk to you about uh, the inc incident or the instance where in the past where long years ago, I had uh, gotten a subpoena for uh, a child paternity test. And this is something you can't make up either. It goes along the lines of how this movie was played. Uh, you know, person accuses and alleges and you're telling people, no, this is not true. And they're looking at you like, why would a person say this if it wasn't true? And see, this is what people do in the world. They will talk themselves out of listening to rationale because they go with the narrative. And the narrative works 99% of the time. That's why I made a video uh, titled 99.9% .9 of people you can't communicate with. And it got a lot, a lot of views because hmm, I'm not the only one that thinks like this. Something to think about, right? Let's just keep pushing this uh, information out because it doesn't have to make sense to everyone we're talking to. It just has to make sense to the ones who have always thought like this and just needed someone like me to uh, reaffirm what they already knew. And that's what we're here to do. So that being said, bless.